Greetings, madams and messieurs. It's January 23rd today. 10 degrees out, overcast, light snow. Gorgeous day to be on the trap line, not gonna lie. We're at the third trap in the string, and it looks like uh, curly sets have, have uh, struck again here. This was a 280 box that was here, and I noticed some large tracks coming in, but uh, I wasn't expecting a fox. Anyways, we'll get them pulled out and I'll give a I'll let you see them there once we get back to the skidoo. All right. Well, he's froze right up. Now we just come out of a a cold spell, so it's kind of understandable. Very, very dark, and he's very, very gorgeous. And sticking with tradition, I forgot a fur bag. So I'm going to try and get him all nicely packaged up. We'll see you on down the line. Well, mesdames and messieurs, as luck would have it, we have had this wolf bait station set up for a good two months now. And Curly Beard has connected. Now this would be the uh, southeast side of the bait station. I haven't gone up to the west side see some other tracks where they're coming in. I did bring in those six power rams. We're going to drop those in here too. But, uh, let's uh, get some stomping around. There's snow. It snowed about five centimeters yesterday. He's good and dead anyways. Choke it out. Now. Oh yeah. That's what you want. Look at that. No rubs. Kind of a dirty dog, but I'll take them. Just caught a little low. I'm kind of interested to see how these wolfhounds, he's got a big head on them. All right, absolutely ecstatic. We're uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna try and get this guy out without having to take down this tree. And uh, I'll turn these back on if there's any other excitement. All right, mesdames and messieurs, we're on the northwest side of the uh, of the bait station. Snares knocked down. The wolves did come through. They just missed the snare, and that's all. Uh, I see they they went in through the bottom end here, but I don't see anywhere where they hit the snares. And the one thing that I have noticed is they're not really running the road. They're running 90 degrees to the road. So normally I don't drive the skidoo in to the bait station. I have those six wolf rams I want to set up. And Curly Beard is currently trying to procure some more meat. So I'm going to break a trail in. And uh, hopefully Curly can get some more meat this weekend to, to bait up. I'm going to continue just nosing around here. Go through and actually count all the snares. And we'll see you down the line. All right, mes amis, for those of you guys and gals that are starting with wolves, this is my setup, okay? Others might do it a little differently, but this is my setup. I have a snare bag here. I carry anywhere between a dozen, two dozen snares. Um, Pre-season, I discuss with Curly how many he wants. I make them up if I need them. And we divide and conquer type of deal. So Curly's usually got anywhere from a dozen to 18 snares on them. And I have the same. <clears throat> this bait station that we're currently at, there's our beautiful, beautiful wolf over there. I've been setting this since I own the trap line. What this is, is a road off of a main road. So it used to be a, a main logging road. It has grown in to become a four-wheeler trail. So this was one of the fingers that they must have logged years ago. It's a dead end. I don't get any any issues with bird hunters or, well, I'm not set up usually during bird season. I usually start my wolves about start of November, mid-November. And at least in this area, what I have noticed is the wolves don't usually tend to bother with the bait stations until all the waters froze up. So once food gets scarce, then they start hitting the bait station. So I dump my meat out in the open. 
I cover it with uh, with brush and trees. I've buried beaver carcasses. You, you want to make it tough for the birds to eat it all on you, but it still brings them in to bring in the wolves. Now where we picked this guy up, there's an old road right here. It's growing up. You know, like if a guy uh, if a guy spent an hour or two on a chainsaw, you could punch a road out, but all it leads to is back to a swamp. And then on this side, you can see it's all bushy and, and growing up, but there is a, an old road. We were just up on, on that side where the snare was knocked down. And I have snares laced going in about 100 yards, 150 yards. So traditionally what these wolves do is, maybe I, if I can draw a little... So we have, we have a main road that comes up, there's a sub road that comes over and comes down and it splits. So my bait station is right here. The road I just explained, it goes out to a beaver pond right here. We can hit it from, from this side, that's why we don't bother punching it through. There was an old road that used to go and curl right back to this main road. So my bait station is right here, it's out of the way. Like I said, I don't get bothered with hunters or anything, it's out of the way for the dogs. And we lace this road and this road with snares. Traditionally, the wolves come in from my main river system, travel down, and they always try to sneak in the back. That's why these, these two roads are set up. So what I'm gonna do now, oh, I should give you the, a quick tour, right, 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 right. So in my snare bag, we, we've already established I carry my wolf snares. My wolf snares are boiled and then put in Ziploc bags. I also carry, I used to carry fox and lynx snares. Now I make the snares about 12 inches in diameter. And if I want to snare fox, I shrink them in. And if I want to snare lynx, I expand them a little bit. It just saves on having multiple types and getting confused and yada yada yada. I haven't had time. We're going to try it anyways. I haven't had time to do anything with the rams with the tie-offs or with the snares but we're going to chance it anyways and see what happens. Normally I would boil them and then they would go into a plastic bag with some cedar boughs or spruce boughs and just eliminate all human scent. Well, as much as possible anyways. And then here are, these are my everyday gloves. I handle meat, uh, gas, everything with them. These guys here that are wrapped up in a plastic bag, these are my snare handling gloves. So I'm going to put these on, I'm going to grab a snare and an anchor, and a ram, and I'm going to go to this pine tree over here, and I'm going to rub everything, everything in the bush, up and down in the, uh, in the boughs of the pine tree to try and eliminate as much smell as I can. And then we're going to head back where Curly uh, took that wolf, we're going to go even further back, and we're going to start hanging some power rams and see how these guys go. So, see you on down the line. All right, maze of me. We're uh, this is where Curly got that wolf. So I'm only maybe 10 feet away. You can see they got a trail leading up there, heading up that way. So we hung a power ram right here. Now I'm hoping that they won't notice it. Uh, learned a few lessons. So in hanging this thing, all I did was I took a piece of uh, heavy gauge wire and it's just got a half turn on it, that's it. And it will drop once it fires. So that leads me to uh, my second lesson. Uh, when these things fire, they absolutely bugger your snare and they ruin the underwears you are currently wearing. So memo to self, bring spare snares and a spare pair of underwears. All right, we're going to... Uh, Wait for that smell to dissipate a little bit. And they have another trail coming in over here. There's, there's actually three nice spots, that being one of them, the one that we just set up. There's a nice spot right there where I won't have to hang it and scare the, well, you know out of me. I could go over and possibly anchor to one tree and just let it hang there. If I could sneak over there without, uh, where'd you go? Yeah, if I can sneak over right, here without destroying their trail and I think there's 
one more, yeah, there's one more spot right in here where they come through and then buggered off on and down and in and around. I might be able to hang one right there. Well, not hang one, but place one, we'll say, right there. Maybe even a little further back in the brush. All right, I gotta go grab another snare and I'll see you with the remakes. Okay, maze of me. Attempt number two, even with that, uh, that stink lingering around, uh, it went not too tea bag. I got it on his trail there. I'm going to try and just hide my track of ooze a little bitty bit. I got it choked around the tree and I'll give you a shot of it from, uh, from where we got the last wolf. So this is where we, uh, we just picked up that wolf. There's that power ram right on their trail. All right, we got one more to go back here. And then I'm going to hang one right by the bait station. And I think that's it. Seeing them down a snare. I do have six. I'm going to hang four to try and we'll go from there. Stay tuned. All right, maze of me. There's set number three. They have, uh, they were walking all over in there, so I just kind of scooted in, dropped the power ram in, and then scooted out. So I don't think I can get a better position for you. Oh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so right beside that big tree is where they're coming in on the uh, on the east side. So I just dropped it in. I left the ear sticking out of the from behind the tree a little bit, but what can you do, eh? Alright, we got one more at the bait station to hang. I still have all my teeth and my uh, uh, my manly parts right where they belong. So we'll go hang that last one and then uh, head her home. Stay tuned. All right, maze of me. There's the last one. You can see they got pretty well the groomed trail. And all that thick brush and all I did was go in, hog tie it around a big tree. Again, big shout out to Jason Angle. Thanks for, uh, thank you for the anchors, for the anchor ideas. I'm using the little loop, big loop idea. So that's, I got it tied off to, there's a large uh, jack pine in here. You might even be able to see the cable on the top of the snow there. So I got it anchored off to that big jack pine. And then I just snuck in and, and set her down right on. So, a bit of a learning experience, like I've said. Uh, if I don't, uh, I got two snares to check that are kind of off the beaten path. I'll be checking those on the way back. If those don't pan out, stay frosty. Hey, maze of me. I was going to end the uh, the video in the bush, but I received a hoodie there from Mr. Jason Angle. Angle trapping. Smoking by the pack, I think it's uh, it's uh, relevant. If you guys haven't ordered your shirts yet, look Jason up. Get your orders in. Currently, yours is in the house. Till next time, stay frosty.